at the speed of light, there is no sequence. Everything happens at the same instant. That's acoustic, and uh, everything happens at once. Uh, there's no continuity, there's no connection, there's no, there's no follow through. It's just all now. And that, by the way, is uh, the way any sport is. Eh? Uh, sports mm -hmm. uh, tend to be like that. And in terms of uh, the uh, new uh, lingo of the hemispheres, it's all right hemisphere. Games are all right hemisphere. And uh, because they involve the whole man, and they are all participatory, and uh, they're all uncertain, they're not, uh, there's no continuity, there's just all uh, uh, surprise, unexpectedness, and total involvement. Is that okay, do you think? The hemisphere thing? Yeah, but I mean well, the whole thing, no surprise, all spontaneity, uh, no connection, just uh, all at one time. Is that okay for people? Well, okay, I meaning is it good for people? Yes. We live in a world where everything is supposed to be one thing at a time, lineal, connected, logical, and goal-oriented. So obviously for that left hemisphere world, this new right hemisphere dominance is bad. We're now living in a world which pushes the right hemisphere way up because it's an all-at-once world. The right hemisphere is an all-at-once simultaneous world. So uh, the right hemisphere, by pushing uh, up into dominance, is making the old left hemisphere world which is our educational establishment, our political establishment, make it look very foolish. What do you think is the most, uh, uh, I, want, I want to use the word effective, but that's not the right word, but I'm talking about television here. Uh, what has the greatest impact on audience? From is a TV program. Is, is television best when it covers an event like a space shot or the Olympics? or a baseball game? Is it best when it tries to entertain with, uh, with movies at night, uh, when it tries to inform with news programs that have films I of things that have already happened? The advantage of coverage of sports events is they are ritualistic. The group gathered there is participating in a ritual. Now, the, the, the Olympics were even more a group ritual than the ordinary competitive um, event in a ball game or a single ball game, a single event, because they had a, a corporate meaning. It was not just a pro, uh, local, it was a, a sort of a worldwide meaning. And this is itself a ritualistic participation in a large uh, process. Television in fosters and favors a world of corporate participation in ritualistic programming. It's, uh, it's not really, uh, that's why I'm, what I mean when I say it's a, it's a cool medium, it's not a hot medium. A hot medium can, can, like a newspaper, can cover single events, very high intensity. Uh, TV is not good at covering single events. <clears throat> it needs a ritual, a, a, a rhythm, and a pattern. And uh, that's why uh, a lot of advertising on TV, you see, is too hot, too special, too fragmentary. Doesn't have that ritualistic flow. But the, uh, this, this, the advertisers are aware of this, and they're doing a lot to correct that. But I think that was the, the great secret of a thing like the Olympics. People had the feeling of participating as a group in a great, meaningful ritual. And it didn't much matter who won. That wasn't the point. But I think TV tends to foster uh, that type of fa uh, pattern in events. Well, you might say it f tends to foster patterns rather than events. I was here during the tornado or the, or the uh, hurricane. hurricane. And I was amazed at the excitement that that generated in everybody, expectancy. And it was covered so thoroughly that it dissipated the storm itself. The coverage actually got rid of the storm. I think that is one of the functions of news, to blow up a storm so big that you can dissipate it by coverage. It's a way of getting rid of the pressure by coverage. That you can actually dissipate a situation by giving it a maximal coverage. It's very disappointing from one angle, but it's survival from another angle. But now angle. don't you get into alarming people? Um, that's done by rumors, not by coverage. Hints, suggestions. Uh, but the big coverage merely enables people to get together and enjoy the a sort of a, a group emotion. It's like a, being at a ball game, a big group emotion. But... Uh, I do think that, uh, that, that that taught me that one of the mysteries of coverage is that it's a way of releasing tension and pressure. What would happen if you could shut off television for 30 days in the entire United States of America? Uh, it would be a, a kind of uh, hangover effect uh, because it's very addictive medium. 
and you, you take it away and people develop all the uh, symptoms of a hangover. Uh, uh, very uncomfortable. It was tried, remember, the, uh, the, a few years ago, very, th two or three years ago, they actually paid people not to watch TV for a few months. I don't recall that, but I'm it sure was it was in Germany. Going. It was in Germany. It was in the, in the, in the U UK. And they discovered they had all the withdrawal symptoms of drug addicts. And uh, very uncomfortable, uh, all, the, all the trauma of, uh, uh, of withdrawal, withdrawal symptoms. A TV is a very, very involving medium and it is a form of inner trip. And uh, so people do miss it. I, the thought just occurred to me that possibly if you turned off television, there would be a lot of people who said, who would say at the end of the 30-day period, we will not permit you to turn it back on. Do you think that could happen? A great many of the teenagers have uh, stopped watching television. They're saturated. Saturation is a possibility. Um, about the... Uh, uh, possibility of, of reneging on any future TV, I doubt it. Uh, I doubt that, except through saturation. But the, uh, the TV thing is so demanding uh, and uh, therefore so soporific uh, that uh, it requires an enormous amount of energy to participate in. It, you don't have that freedom of detachment. We're just talking about basic television programs. Yeah. Well, one of the effects of television is to remove people's private identity. They become corporate, peer group people uh, just by watching it. Uh, they lose interest in being individual, private individuals. And uh, so this, this is one of the hidden and uh, uh, perhaps insidious effects of television. Have you watched uh, uh, enough of Jimmy Carter during all the primaries to figure out why he has been so effective with his presentations on television. Well, I, haven't, I haven't seen a great deal, but his, his charisma is very simply identified. He looks like an awful lot of other people. He looks like an all-American boy. He looks like all the American boys that ever were, which is charisma. Charisma means looking like a lot of other people. If you just look like yourself, you have no charisma. So Carter has a lot of built-in charisma of that looking like a lot of other guys. A very acceptable guy. How helpful would you be to Mr. Carter or whomever the Republicans choose if they were to come to you and say, you know, Mr. McClellan, we'd like to hire you for a specified fee to advise us on a political campaign? I could tell them when they were hot, hotting up the image too much and phasing out that charisma. The, ten, uh, the temptation of any, any campaign manager is to hot up the image until it alienates everybody. And uh, it, they don't realize when they're doing it. How do you know <clears throat> when the image is getting too hot? Specialized. The moment it begins to specialize, it phases out the uh, group. What do you mean specialize? It begins to look uh, more and more like one guy. It begins to look more and more like Jimmy Carter and less and less like the rest of America. Forgive my impertinence, but has anybody asked you why you are sometimes difficult to understand? <laughs> uh, because I use the right hemisphere when they're trying to use the left okay. hemisphere. Okay, well, Simple. I'll try and get back on the, the left. The, you see, the, when, they, when the people ordinary Ordinarily, people are trained to try to follow you and to connect everything you say with what they last heard. They're not prepared to use their wits. They're only prepared to use the idea they picked up the first time and try to connect it to another idea. So if you're in a situation that is flexible, where you have to use your wits and perceptions, they can't follow you. They have preconceptions that phase them out at mm -hmm, once. Mm -hmm. You see, that's left hemisphere. I use the right hemisphere a great deal, which is a world of perception, not no concepts. I don't use anything. Got you, got you. I, I don't and you don't try to connect things, you I just let the right hemisphere take over and yeah. let it go. And watch what's happening. And so that, that, is, the, uh, that, is, the, that is the way it, the cookie crumbles sort of thing, where you don't know what's going to happen, but you follow the crumble.